here in this auditorium and it's time for our Sunday school to those who are at the back please come so that together we will sit and study the word which we have just uh, done this morning in our meeting so let us practice now hallelujah praise the Lord Father, we thank you for this time and to study once again your word. Holy Spirit, you are the real teacher here and I am just your vessel. So I commit this study unto you that as we go on, God, a word will uh, come into our heart to change us for the good in Jesus' name. And to everyone who is on their way, Father, I pray hasten their feet so that together we will study and learn from your word in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So our topic for today is found in page 25 in your manual. That is lesson 8, which is the title is Political Dominion. Dominion is a heavy word for us today. So let's, we will study that. And before we go there, our topic last week, if you are here, I believe that uh, you, we have picked up something there about Christians and human rights or the rights of every human here on earth. We have two outlines there. We have learned that uh, there is a biblical perspective and the role of the Christian. Um, Michelle, please call those people at the back, please. Class? Okay, class. So we are many here. <laughs> okay. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, la la. So nice to sleep, huh? Praise the Lord. So can you name one, uh, one biblical perspective on what we have learned last week about Christian and human rights? Number one. Anyone? Yes. Right to life and liberty. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in another one is all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. Hallelujah. And the role of the Christian, what we have learned that we have to know our rights also. And we will not allow others to, it says here, to infringe your right to live life fully. Amen. So, uh, so we will not run, uh, so that we can, <clears throat> we will go to our topic now so that we will not run out of time. And those people who are watching, sit down and listen while you are having your coffee. Amen. Political dominion. That is our lesson for today. And our memory verse is found in Revelation 5.10. Let's read together. One, two, go. And has made us unto our God, kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. So we shall reign on the earth. That is in Revelation 5.10. So what it is says that we shall reign on earth and not in heaven. <laughs> so our reign is here on earth. We shall reign on earth. The redeemed. Who are the redeemed? We are the redeemed of whom we are the representative. 
Amen? We are the representative. The redeemed are the representat- representatives. The idea clearly is in accordance of what is so frequently said in the scriptures that the dominion on the earth will be given to the saints. And that is us. Amen? If you are not sure that you are a saint, please call us so that we will tell you how to become a saint. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, the dominion on the earth will be given to the saints. That is, that there will be such a prevalence of the relig- of true religion. And the redeemed will be so much in the ascendancy that the affairs of the nations will be in their hands. That is so good. Amen? And um, righteous people will hold offices. We pray. We always pray that righteous people will hold offices, will fill places of trust and responsibility, will have a controlling voice in all that per- pertains to human affairs. According to Daniel 7.27, we know the life of uh, Daniel. He has an excellent spirit and we pray that all the people up there, in, in the uh, political arena will be like Daniel. We pray, we pray. You see, imagine what, will be, what, what the world will be if everybody has an excellent spirit. So political dominion, I am, I am asking why political? So political must be very powerful because they are those people who are up there making rules and laws to... To, um, how do you say that? To rule the, the laws and rule of the land, to implement to everyone that no one, no one will violate it. If they will violate it, they will be punished. So, political, uh, I believe, is very powerful position. Amen. Before I don't like politics, but when we start studying politics, uh, since we are still down there, I say. I'm old enough to be in politics though, but there are even older people who are in politics just like our, uh, ad, just like the, ad, one of the advisors of our president in the Philippines. He is in his, he is in his 90s. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, so I believe his expertise is the qualification why he, they, they, uh, they hire him or they let him they put him into that position. So, political dominion. What is dominion? Dominion. What is dominion? Yes. To rule, to dominate. Amen. So, the power or right of governing and controlling. Amen. Sovereign authority, rule, control, domination. Who would want that? Who wouldn't want to rule? Like, I will rule. But in the Bible, uh, the Bible, it says that we are not to rule uh, people. See? The God's, uh, we will see that in our Bible passage. Genesis 1, 26-28. Genesis 1, 26-28. No one is, por- portrayed, uh, is uh, putting the Bible verses there, yeah? 26 to 28. 26 to 28. Mm. Then God said, Let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Verse 28. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Amen. See, that's why I say no human beings will rule fellow human beings. Because it says in the... So he... In uh, verse 26, they will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth. 
He didn't mention human beings. Huh? So we will go on. We will understand that later. So the explanation of this Bible verse is that in contrast to animals in verses 20 and verse 24 of the same chapter, where God said, let the waters bring forth. Let the waters bring forth. And it says also, and let the earth bring forth. He now says, he now says, let us make man in our image. Yeah, that's what we have read. Let us, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Likeness or character or nature or personality. All others reproduce after their kind, but man is the only one made in the image of God and reproducing in that image, according to Genesis 5.3. So the term image and likeness are used as synony, syno, synonymously and refer primarily to man's spiritual resemblance, rationally and morally. Amen? To his maker. God placed a great chasm between man and the beast. For only man has the capacity for eternal life, fellowship, moral discernment, self-consciousness, speech, and worship. Animals cannot worship. Only human worship. Even after the fall, man retain, retains the image of God. According to Genesis 9, 6 and James 3, 9. Though it has been marred, dominion is not the content but the consequence of the divine image according to Hebrews 2, 7 to 10. And it's, we, there is, uh, it says here, and God bless them. So to bless is not only to bestow a gift but also to assign a function. So that is another meaning of of to bless, to assign another, to assign a function. We also read there, replenish is better translated fill the earth, indicating the first time. Fill the earth, it says, because the earth is empty. And uh, it could be used in support of the refashioning of an already judged earth, for it always means to fill something the first time. Praise the Lord. So let's go on to our introduction. The word dominion means, as we have uh, defined uh, earlier on, rule or power over. Amen. Rule or power over. God has sovereign power over his creation and has also delegated the authority, the authority to mankind to have dominion over the works of his hands. As we have read in uh, Genesis 1.26 and Psalms 8.6, it says you gave them charge of everything you made. See, everything you made. Putting all things under their authority. However, some Christians are passive and do not see that God wants the church to take charge of and revamp their societies. Their societies, revamp. I look on the dictionary what is revamp. Give new and improved form in stru structure or appearance. So that is the meaning of revamp. Uh, instead, they only see the command for believers to preach. Amen. Believers to preach the gospel as in Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Go and therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Praise Amen. The, praise the Lord. Uh, and wait for God to implement social reform itself. This is... Um, this is the... Knowledge that I have before, before, before I understand that only church, only church, what is this? They only see the command for believers to preach the gospel, not, uh, not uh, include, not, uh, not involving themselves to, to this ruling 
in the government because that is uh, that is not their job or they don't want to to be involved in that uh, to, to be involved in that uh, area of uh, ruling because we have we have studied before that politics is dirty politics is like this like that so maybe that is the mindset before but now that we are studying our mind is opening up so that we have to decide to be involved in politics so that we can make laws and rules that will glorify God amen praise the Lord so we don't have to uh, it says this, and wait for God to implement social reforms himself. No, because uh, God has put us here so that we will be the instruments to implement or to influence, uh, to influence God-likeness in the society, in our community, in our neighborhood, everywhere we go. That's why he called us light and salt. Amen. So we have two outlines, dominion theology and disposition of Christians to political dominion. We have defined what is dominion is. And uh, we will go to outline number one, dominion theology. Theology, what is theology in your understanding? Okay, theology. Another meaning? The study of the nature of God and religious belief. Amen. The study of uh, the nature of God and religious belief. Theos is God. Logos is knowledge. That is the Greek word. And it means uh, systematic study of God. Systematic. From the beginning to where it ends. Hallelujah. So that is theology. Dominion theology refers to a line of thought with regards to the role of the church in contemporary society. It holds that Christians should rule all areas of society. See? Christians should rule all areas of society, personal and corporate by the law of God. So it is necessary for all of us to get involved in political, political uh, world. So because that is one that is that is one of the world that the Bible is talking about, the world of politics. So we must get involved in that so that we can implement godly laws, godly rules to influence people who doesn't know God yet or who who, who know God but not really that deep. Amen. And then when we can, in, when we influence them, and then they will follow and become, uh, they will become that person who will also do what God wants in the society. Where are we now? So this belief is based on Genesis 1.28 as we have read. Genesis 1.28, then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Multiply, that is before multiply fill the earth and govern it govern it see that is what god wants us see that that is what he wants uh humans to do to govern the earth that he has made especially for humans humans amen to govern to rule to make laws Uh, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. That's what it says. And subdue it. See, subdue it. And uh, have dominion. See, this verse is a divine mandate to claim dominion over earth. It means that before the fall, we are dominating. Amen. Before the fall, just like Adam before. He, he has all these things that God has. Before the fall, he, he named all the animals, he ruled, he, he, he created, uh, I believe, laws also because it's the, God says this is our divine mandate. This is our original mandate. Dominion over the earth. Physically, 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 we will have dominion over physical bodies when we are sick. We will say, Sickness, you don't have power over my body because this body belongs to God. Because this body 
is the dwelling place of God. So physically, that sickness who has that that has a name will uh, will be subdued because of the power that is living in us. Spiritually, also economically, 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 shuhada, economically. <laughs> And politically, that is what we are studying now, pol politically. Those people who are in uh, political, political world, in politics, is very powerful, especially when you are a president. You are the president. See, I believe, I believe someday people who are here attending, if, they, if, we, uh, if we continue to... To seek the Lord, to seek His face, to do His will, one of us here will become a president. Amen. So that we will reign in our countries to implement godly, godly virtues, godly attitudes, godly characters, godly laws and rules in Jesus' name. In Luke 19.13, in Luke 19.13, uh, it says, before he left, he called together ten of his servants and divided among them ten pounds of silver, saying, invest this for me while I am gone. In other version says, occupy till I come. So we have to do business. God asked us to do business, to occupy. It says, uh, what you have, uh, what you have, invest it, make it more. The one talent, make it multiply it it means like that uh, this theo theological idea about Christians having political dominion has its root root in the nature of God and reality the importance of justice what is what is what is me what is the meaning of this the importance of the justice that you won't have to you will not be you will not have this attitude of favoritism because she or he is your sister brother relative mother father you will favor him even if he or she is not qualified or uh, what is the other word of that and then you will neglect the one who is qualified so that is that is uh, what is mean the importance of justice you 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 don't have to be biased the value of freedom freedom of what freedom to express as long as it won't contradict or it won't create it won't create a uh, trouble amen the value of freedom expressing what you know is right for the good of all and a rich understanding of the human person as created in the image in the image of god according to psalms 82 verse 6 psalms 82 verse 6 what does it says there i have said you are gods See, it's the same thing in uh, John 34. It's saying it is written in your own scriptures that God said to certain leaders of the people, I say you are gods. Gods in the small g, not big g. Because we are really the little gods. Because we are created in the image of God. Hallelujah. So we are gods because we are created in the image of God. We have the nature, the character of God. We have the personality of God. He puts in us that personality. So we have to, we have to uh, remember that so that we will not uh, step on other people's foot. Okay? Because you think he is lower or superior to you. But no, we are all created in the image of God. And uh, also, in Psalms 92, verses 12 to 13, made, we are made for flourishing. Flourishing like uh, we will be fruitful even in our old age, as, as it says in Psalms 92, 92, 12 to 13. It says, but the godly will flourish like palm trees. 
and grow strong like the cedar of Lebanon. I am, I am very curious about this cedar of Lebanon because I haven't seen one, only in pictures. They, they say it's very tall and big and uh, giant, so it must be very beautiful tree, powerful tree. See, it, it, because it compares us to the cedars of Lebanon, for they are transplanted to the Lord's own house they flourish in the courts of our God. So we are made to flourish. We are not made to just stay the same. Amen. Because uh, it's, not, it, it's not good. It, doesn't, it won't look good for God. It's not good for his reputation. And we are called to an eternal destiny. Hallelujah. We are called to a... Uh, to an eternal destiny. Let's see Romans 8.30. Romans 8.30. Moreover, whom he predestined, this he also called. Whom he called, this he also justified. And whom he justified, this he also glorified. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we are called to an eternal destiny. And having chosen us, or it says here, and having chosen them in NLT. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. So it is God who always calls. Amen. It is God who always calls. <clears throat> and having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. Praise the Lord. God is so good. He gave. He gave them right standing with himself. Praise the Lord. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. What is glory? There's, uh, there's a preacher who come to our church, says, we are the glory of God. Especially when we, are, we all are living in, in his way. So we are his glory. So, if, so people, if people see us and if we are living in his own way, then that is the glory of God. Amen? Hallelujah. So, that is our outline number one. Politica, uh, dominion, theology. By the way, to those who come late, our topic is political dominion. So, we must endeavor to go to politics even if I am old. Maybe when I go home, I will be, I will, I will offer myself to be a counselor or advisor. Amen. Before, before when I, I remember when we are down there with Mami Sarah and Yanti. I am old to be in politics, so lead da. <laughs> but when I learned about this, I have this desire. And, and you know, before our election and after our election, I have this uh, desire to, because the president who won is my, is my uh, candidate, and he won. And we love him so much, and he won. Many people oppose him, but he's just quiet, so humble, so intelligent. He, he, he don't do talk so much. He just work. And you can see the result of what he's doing, and it's benefiting all the Filipino people. Hallelujah. So... I believe when I go home, I will do that. So, <laughs> hallelujah. So, you can inf we can influence. Now that we know these things, we know, you know what is right and we know what is wrong. So, you don't have to impose them. You don't have to impose to them forcefully. But, of course, we have to pray and then we have to influence them quietly in the power of God which is the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And number two outline is disposition of Christian to political dominion. Disposition. Hallelujah. Means a person's inherent qualities of mind and character. Amen. The political docility of Christians of the earth, of the early church could be traced to the fact that Israel and some Gentile nations were under the colonial rule of the Roman Empire. And Christians were taught to be in subjection to, uh, the, to the authorities that be at best. In Romans, 
Romans 13:1. See in those in that time, in that in the, in in that era where we have read colonial rule of the Roman Empire, they are they are subjected because they don't have the power. The 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 one ruling is the Roman not not Roman Catholic, ro- Roman uh, <laughs> Roman uh, people, Kingdom of Rome. See? So they are down there and the Roman kingdom is up there so they have to be under them subjected to them that's why they will not desire to be in the ruling world world because that empire is already in that ruling uh, they are already ruling in that era so that is their mindset so they don't have to join politics or join political uh, join the politics in that era. So that is the mindset. That's why they, they did not run. They just rule to their fellow, fellow Jews or fellow uh, Israelites. But only there. They will not go higher. In Romans 13.1, Romans 13.1, it says, um, it's there. Everyone must submit Everyone must submit to governing authorities. I'm reading from NLT. For all authorities, for, for all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. Amen. All authorities have been placed there by God. Whether those people in the politics are believers or not, they are put there by God. Because every, everything that is happening here on earth, God is involved. Whether you believe him or not, he, he put you there because he has a purpose. He has a reason for you to be there. He, he knows you already even when you are in the womb, as we heard in the book of Jeremiah, that he has a plan for you to do that certain thing in that nation, in that certain uh, generation, uh, just like our... My country, Philippines, now. Praise the Lord. Docility. What is docility? The quality, docility, it's here in found. The political docility of Christians. Docility. Huh? Yeah, docility. I find, it, I find the meaning of that. The quality of being quiet and easy to influence. It's like you don't have mind. You say... Yes, so oh, yes, oh yes, oh. You don't have to say no. Just say yes because you are afraid. Amen. You are easy to persuade or to control. So Christians must not have this. Uh, must not have this trait or uh, attitude or quality. Amen. We must be strong. We must, that's why we must know our right. Everybody knows. Who, everybody must know. What is his right in every nation, in every community, even in the world? Amen. As we have studied last time, that uh, all humans are created uh, equal, has the right to live life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Where are we? They were to pray for those in power and could not participate in the politics of their time. See, they could not. They were to pray for those in power and could not participate in the politics of their time. This is in that era. But now that we know, we have to get involved. In uh, second, First Timothy had a First Timothy two one and two. It. Okay, First Timothy 2, 1 and 2. I urge you first of all to pray for all people, ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Verse 2, pray this way for the kings, uh, for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. Amen. So, we we are commanded even at this at, at this uh, generations to pray. Of course, we have to pray for them because they are put there by God for a purpose for a reason. So we pray that they will do good. They will not uh, make the nation 
uh, in trouble or to do such things that will cause the citizens to suffer. Amen? So we have to pray and pray and pray. Even if they are not believers, are we praying for the leader of this nation? Yes, I am too. Because if not, we, won't have, we will not uh, have peace in this land. Amen? So we have to pray for those who are there as they are put in that position for a reason by God himself. And this might have been responsible for why Christians hesitate hesitate to be actively involved in politics of our days, just like what we have uh, studied before, because politics has this uh, negative, um, negative meaning to all of us. Let them just do. We cannot involve there because we are holy. We are people of God, and we, 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 don't, uh, we don't get involved in that dirty work of the politician. But no, the, the God we believe and serve is interested in the way the world is governed. So this uh, world of politics is just one of the world that we need to influence, to get involved with. Because this is the will of God, to influence them in a godly way. To make laws that will, uh, that will, that will glorify God. Amen? Hallelujah. I have, I have read an article that is uh, this morning and it bothers me because it's, it's saying something. This is one of the world that uh, the Bible is saying, not only politics, but in a digital world. Now we are in the digital, gener digital generation. Am I right? Digital generation because everything is digital. Hello, are you still there? <laughs> I read about an article, Digital dictator, Dictatorship is Coming, the Power to Monitor and Control All Transactions. It's scary. Because digital, we all use cell phones. I have, uh, I have heard that even if you remove the battery of your phone, some nations can still detect what is going on. Amen. <laughs> Even they still, you see what is this? Digital dictatorship is coming. They will, uh, they will control your money. They will control what you have and you don't have. You see? They will, uh, they even create smart contracts. What is smart contracts? I say, well, I have read this morning. I say, the smart contract would allow targeted policy functions like welfare payments, consumption coupons, food stamps, and uh, they can precisely control what people can and can't own. See? And also what kind of use this money can be programmed for, like food only. So if food only, food only. If you don't have clothes, you cannot buy clothes, just food. <laughs> so it's a bit scary. That's why we have to desire or endeavor to join politics because there there is an influence. So make ourselves known. Amen. Christians must make noise in that political world. Hallelujah. Let us make noise. Don't think just like me that I am old to get involved in politics. Okay, let's continue. Satan stole the keys of dominion when he deceived Satan and Eve. Then, when Christ gave the keys of, kingdom, of the kingdom to Peter in Matthew 16, 19, Matthew 16, 19, he says, and I will give you the keys. Amen? Keys. Keys are principles, laws. Amen? So, it was a sign that dominion had been returned to man. Amen? Praise the Lord. When the Lord Jesus Christ and, G and uh, the Holy Spirit now dwelling in us, that is the time that the keys of the kingdom is returned to humans. Amen? It, it, it's been returned to men. Now it's our job to take back what is rightfully ours that the devil has taken. Now it is given back to us. We have this chance now to, to take back what is rightfully ours. Political dominion is a must for Christians and not an option. So who is going to go to the politics world now when we will go to our countries? Amen. Thank you, Baba. 
Let's do it in Jesus' name. Political dominion is a must for Christians and not an option, not an excuse because the earth is our place of dominion. See, He placed us on here on earth to have to dominate. Amen? Not in heaven because heaven is the place of God. He is the one ruling there and He puts us here on earth to rule, not in heaven. According to Psalms 115, 16, Psalms 115.16, The heaven belongs to the Lord, but He has given the earth to all humanity. So, no excuse, no excuse for us. Sister Abimbula, go to politics. <laughs> Pastor Jesse will go to politics. All the passengers in the airline, he will uh, influence. Hallelujah. If you don't follow me, you know where you're going. Yes? See? That's it. See, if you don't follow me, I am the pilot here. Say yes now or... <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's do it. Let's get into politics. Amen. That is the easiest way to win souls. Amen. Up in the air. <laughs> Hallelujah. So remember that, Jesse. Before you go, to be, uh, don't talk when you're still on the ground because they have a, there will be a chance to run, yeah? So when you're up there, ladies and gentlemen, this is pilot, Captain Jesse, the pilot and the captain, <laughs> whatever, in this, in this airline. And then you, you start to talk. Anyone who will contradict me, say, say it now. Ha. They will all say yes to you. I believe everybody because they will know what they where will be going if they say no. Amen. So let's continue now. Christians have to occupy strategic political positions to be at the helms of affairs to for positive influence. See, just like that airplane, and even in the ship. Amen. So you are the only one who knows the, the, the nooks and crannies of that ship, of that big ship, and if they say no to you, you know where you're going. Either you go, you, you go down, 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 or you go up, up, up. Just say now. Yes, say. Yes, yes, now. Praise the Lord. While it's true that we belong to a heavenly kingdom that is not of this world, we are still numbered among the people in this world and are subjected to the rules and system, systems of its government. According to John 17, 15, and 16. John 17, 15, and 16. <clears throat> Let's continue. We are still numbered. We are still here. So we have to endeavor. Brother Elias, I believe one day you will become... This, uh, is there a senator here in this nation? No. Mafi senator here, yeah? Uh, Mayor of Abdun. Abdun City. Uh, Hebrews 11, 10, 14, but I will, I will uh, read in 13, 14. For this world is not our home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. We have, we have a home, a new heaven and a new earth. Amen? But that should not be an excuse once again to be nonchalant. Okay? Before, I don't know what is this. I, 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 <laughs> nonchalant. I, I thought it's nonchalant, but nonchalant. Uh, can nonchalant hallelujah nonchalant see there's a lot of words that we can we can learn when we are teaching yeah nonchalant what is the meaning of nonchalant <laughs> yeah feeling or appearing casually calm and relaxed not displaying anxiety interest or enthusiasm when did we 
when did when, is it yesterday julie when you are looking the right word enthusiasm shazam it's like a super heavy shazam <laughs> hallelujah so that is nonchalant lack of enthusiasm praise the lord so let's continue before we uh, finish the time um now where are we that should not be an that should not be an excuse to be nonchalant about our present abode and refuse to take responsibility for its governance it is also true that the world is passing away first corinthians 7 31 but we should not forget that we will also give an account of how it is managed before it before it passed away hallelujah so therefore it should be of concern to Christians to be a part of high-level decision-making. Christians, take note. It should be concerned to Christians to be a part of high-level decision-making processes to ensure that justice is done, biblical principles are upheld in the Christian faith, survives and is preserved. Praise the Lord. Psalms 33 verse 5. Psalms 33 verse 5. Micah 6.8 Micah 6.8 And uh, In Micah 6.8 It says And this is what he requires of you To do what is right To love mercy And to walk humbly with your God So that's what he wants us As the salt and light of the world Matthew 5.13-16 When we engage ourselves in politics and government we speak out for those who cannot speak and defend the rights of the poor and needy. Hallelujah. So we are put there to speak out for and defend the rights of the poor and the needy. So praise the Lord. I think we run out of time. In summary, the understanding of dominion theology will enable believers to take their rights, rightful places in leading in any spheres of this world praise the lord and in conclusion all christians are political oh all christians are political no excuse even baby mira okay you will become a political or you are now whether we realize it or not if we choose not to engage in politics it is a vote for the status quo the way things are so let's endeavor to involve ourselves in this political world in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Now that we understand a bit of this political world, I pray that you will give us a heart to involve ourselves so that we can influence people to do in to do things in your way in the name of Jesus. Amen.